Okay, today we are going to start a new topic uh, about uh, the uh, least squares regression, which is chapter uh, 17. So this is the curve fitting uh, topic. So in this topic, we will start from the uh, linear uh, regression. So the idea of this topic is that uh, you have uh, uh, some uh, data points uh, in terms of uh, X and Y values. And <clears throat> uh, using those data points, you have to fit a curve to that points, to those points. Okay. So uh, we have to uh, fit the curve. So uh, we will start from the uh, simplest of the curves, uh, which is the uh, straight line. So the equation of the straight line is uh, uh, given by this, y is equal to a naught plus a one x. So this is the equation of the straight, uh, straight line. And uh, uh, plus e, uh, that is uh, a constant which is added for the error. The meaning is that if we have these points x1, y1, x2, y2, uh, that straight line uh, will not pass through exactly from each of these points. There will be some error. So now this E, that is the error, uh, that is the uh, also called as the residual between the model and the observation. So uh, there are uh, several ways uh, this uh, uh, straight line can be uh, represented. However, the best way to represent uh, this uh, straight line is when the uh, minimize the sum of the squares of the residuals. So that means we find the value of the residual. In this case, for example, if y is equal to a naught plus a one x plus e. So the value of e will be equal to y minus a naught minus a one x. Yeah, y minus a naught minus a one x. And if we add up all these values for all values of x and y, and uh, uh, we can take them, uh, we take the squares of those values, square of those values and add these values together, square of the errors, square of the residues, uh, then uh, that uh, minimum sum, then that minimum sum uh, will uh, give us the condition for finding the, for finding that straight line. So therefore it yields a unique line for a given set of data. So using these conditions, we can get a unique line. Uh, so as you can see that, if these are the points x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and then we can draw a straight line between those points so that their distances from the distances of these points. And in, in fact, in, in this case, we are taking only the uh, vertical distances. These vertical distances of these points from the straight line are uh, such that the we take the square of those distances and add those squared values together and then that addition will be the minimum so this is uh, of course represented like this sr so sr is the uh, sum of the square of the residuals okay sr is the sum of the squares of the residuals so the purpose is to minimize the sum of the square of the residuals. So for the minimization problem, uh, you take the uh, derivative. In this case, we have uh, two unknowns, A0 and A1. So we can take the derivatives uh, with respect to them one by one. So we can take the partial derivative of uh, uh, the sum of the squares with respect to A0 and the partial derivative or the sum of the square with respect to A1, because A0 and A1 are the two uh, 
the coefficients of the line which we want to find. So if we simplify these terms and uh, uh, collect the terms, uh, the like uh, terms together, okay, uh, then we can get this kind of uh, equation. So if in this equation we can see that this is sigma a naught, okay, and then we can further uh, simplify this equation like this. So uh, n times a naught plus sigma x a1 plus sigma y is equal to sigma y, then sigma x, sigma x square, and then sigma x1, y1. So this form of the equation is called as the normal equations. And this is a set of two, uh, a system of two equations, two linear equations. And you can see that uh, it is relatively easy to memorize this equation as well. So first we take the number n, first we take n, n is the number of points for, uh, for which we are finding the uh, uh, regression, okay? That means if we, are, if we have four points, five points, three points, etc., n are the number of points. And then as sigma x is the sum of the x values, sigma y is the sum of the y values, and uh, sigma x one square is uh, sigma x square is the sum of the square of the x values, and then this is the uh, sum of the product of x and y values. So therefore, if we have a set of points x one x y points, so then in the tabular format we can calculate these uh, values, and then by solving these two equations, uh, then we can find the values of a naught and a one. So in this way, we will get the linear uh, equation in terms of y is equal to a naught plus a one x. So, uh, so these are the normal equations, and then of course, uh, uh, any uh, system of uh, linear equation we can form, uh, write in the uh, matrix uh, form as well, which is convenient for solving on the uh, computer. So if we interchange these, uh, if we try to solve the, these uh, values for algebraically, uh, so then we can find the value of A1 will be given by this formula, n times sigma x, y, y1, minus n times sigma x times sigma y, divided by n times sigma x1 square, n minus uh, square of sigma x, okay? So, and then A naught uh, we can find by this value. A naught will be the uh, mean of Y value minus uh, A1 uh, times X bar, A1 times X bar. So it is this, these are the mean of X and Y values. So this is, uh, so uh, we can use these uh, uh, values equations or these previous uh, equations in the matrix form solve for a naught on n or a1 so any of the uh, situation we can uh, choose so as an example let's say that we have these points uh, fit a straight line to the x and y values in the first uh, two columns that means uh, we have these values one to uh, x values are from one two three four five six seven and y values are 0 0.5 and then uh, like that, as you can see. So uh, we need to fit a straight line between these two lines. So for fitting the straight line, we need uh, the values of A0 and A1. So where A0 is equal to Y bar and minus A1 X bar, and then the value of A1 as given by this formula. So, so for in order to apply uh, this formula, so first of all, we have to find the sigma X. So sigma X will be from one to seven, so that will be 28. Uh, sigma y will be, we, we also need sigma y, sigma y will be 0 0.5 to 2.5, then that we can uh, calculate. Okay, so maybe we can, I can show it on, um, on the spreadsheet. Okay, so let me copy and paste the values for here. So in the spreadsheet, 
I have this and I have the formula for that. Copy and paste. And then again, I copy and paste it. Okay, so I can start from the X value and then Y value. So X value is one. Can you see the Excel sheet? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you see the Excel sheet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is uh, 0 0.5, 2.5, 2, 4, 3.5, 6, 5.5. .5. Okay. So uh, what will be the sigma x? Sigma x will be the uh, here. So it will be sigma x. So I can click here and then I can click this uh, auto sum button. So that will be sigma x. What will be sigma y? Sigma y will be this 24. Okay, so this is sigma x, sig x, this is sig. What what else we need? We need uh, we need uh, x y sigma. So then we can find x y. Okay, x y is equal to this value multiplied by this value. So this will be zero point five. So it will be here. And what will be their sigma? Sigma that will be here one hundred and nineteen point five. So this will be sigma x y okay and what else we need uh, we need also the uh, x squares okay so x squares x squares okay so that will be equal to this value square and uh, then i will copy it down and then it's sigma is here, okay, 140. So this is sigma x square, okay, sigma x square. So we have all the values which we need for finding A1 and A2, right? Yeah. All the, and n, n is equal to seven. So the n is seven. And what else we need? Sigma x y i square. So uh, that is square of this value. So what we want to find is a1. a1 by this formula is equal to, let's um, start from the bracket, n times uh, sigma x uh, y. Okay, so sigma x y is uh, here, no, here and minus sigma x times sigma y and then bracket close uh, divided by bracket open uh, n times n times sigma x i x sigma x x square, sigma x square is this, and minus uh, square of sigma x, sigma x is here, it's square, and then bracket close. And then I have input the formula, so this will be the value of a1. So uh, a naught is equal to uh, y bar minus a1 x, so y bar, uh, y bar is the average of y. So let me make a space uh, somewhere here. I can move this. I can move this here. Okay. We, I need the average value of uh, y. So uh, what is the average value of y? So it equal to a v e r a g e average. Average value of y 
is this okay and because last for the sum values so this is the average value of y 3.42 so these were the sum and then we have this value okay so so a not a not is equal to uh, y bar so this was y bar actually this is y uh, that is this is y bar that is the average value of y y, uh, uh, y bar is represented by uh, i mean the average is represented by y bar and similarly we need x bar as well okay i forgot for this web as well so x bar will be likewise just copy and paste this formula over here x bar so that is the average value of x so a naught is equal to uh, so now this will be x bar okay so a naught will be equal to uh, y bar this minus the value of a1 times x bar x bar is this so it will be 0 0.071429 so we will get this curve so if we see that by solving it we have found these values all values together and uh, in the end, we get these answers: 0 0.832, and 0 0.07142. Okay, so if we plot these points and if we plot these lines, so we will get this kind of uh, data. So 0 0.074, and then like that. So maybe we can plot it. Okay. So for example, if I want to plot these points. Uh, insert a chart i just select these points okay so i will get this value and I, if i want to add another data point which will be the uh, f uh, uh, the, that is the y predicted okay y predicted okay uh, Y, the predicted value of y so that will be the a naught plus a one x okay so that will be a naught is equal to uh, this uh, a naught value plus uh, a one uh, i can fix this a naught value and plus uh, a one i can also fix this value times the value of x so it will be 0 0.917014 so and then i can add it and now if i want to add one more data series to that then i can uh, format the plot area and how i can add it Uh, add uh, uh, select data okay so in this case what i can what i want is the y i uh, y predicted okay so i want to add uh, add add chart data series so uh, yeah i can you can add this line over here okay so in this case I will add uh, x values here and I can add uh, y values which are here. Yeah, right, which are added, uh, the x values are here and then the uh, y series values are here okay so here i will uh, here i can click okay and then the new uh, this new uh, value like which i can represent by the solid line so you can see that 
now uh, this is the uh, the actual points these are the actual points and then this is the predicted line over here this is the predicted line okay in fact of course there is a direct function as well in microsoft excel and in which you can add this uh, trend line and we can get exactly the same line and then we can also show the equation but here we are uh, uh, illustrating what is the uh, procedure for uh, getting those data so without using any support from the uh, built in support from the uh, excel okay so as you can see that now this line is equally almost equally distributing uh, these lines uh, or in another way where there the square uh, square of the distances between these this line and the these plots is the, is the minimum in this case okay so this is how uh, we can plot a straight line uh, as a, a trend of the given data so is this is this clear and do you have any question regarding this no all right so uh, then let's move to the next one okay uh, well uh, we have uh, in this uh, example uh, we have uh, found the equation of the straight line but of course uh, this straight line is uh, uh, as we can say that uh, this is uh, uh, not uh, uh, 100% uh, fulfilling these uh, points that means uh, there is a difference. So therefore, there is a uh, some error and residual value uh, which uh, we need to uh, find out. So what is the total uh, error? Okay. So the error in this case is uh, it can be represented by this. So this is the uh, regression line, and the error between the uh, between the point on the regression line and the corresponding point. Uh, the data point is uh, represented by this yi minus a naught minus a one x like that. Okay, so if we have a point, uh, uh, the the uh, the point on the line will be a naught plus a one x, and the measurement measured point is y. So the difference between them is uh, y naught uh, minus a naught minus a one x. Okay, so. Uh, with this thing in mind, so you can see that uh, the linear regressions uh, can be made with uh, any type of error. So uh, sometimes the points are very well uh, uh, following the uh, trend. So we can get a very good regression line. But sometimes the, the points are very well, uh, very much uh, uh, distributed okay or separated from each other so we can get uh, a large residual error so in this case in the first case there are small residual errors in this in the second case there are uh, large residual uh, errors so in this in those situations what is the residual uh, error so in so we, for this we need to find the uh, goodness of uh, fit so uh, if the total Uh, some of the uh, squares around the mean uh, for the dependent uh, variable y is uh, uh, s t, which is the total sum of the squares around the mean is s t. Uh, then the sum of the squares of the residuals around the regression line is s r. Then the difference between s t and s r quantifies the improvement or error reduction uh, due to the uh, describing the data in terms of the straight line rather than a, an average uh, value. Okay, so for, in this case, we find uh, a term which is called as the R square, which is called as, uh, which is the coefficient of determination. So R square is equal to ST minus SR over ST. Remember that ST is the total sum of the squares around the mean uh, for the dependent uh, variable total sum of the squares around the mean. 
and where SR is the sum of the squares of residuals around the, around the regression line. So we can find the mean value of the data points, or we can find the, uh, uh, this regression line and then we'll find the difference with them so one of the different one of that uh, will be uh, will be the st the other will be the sr so the difference between st and sr will show the improvement so uh, greater the difference between them uh, then higher is the coefficient of the uh, determination and uh, higher the coefficient of the determination then uh, there is a, a um, there is a better uh, uh, fit of the data to the regression line. So for a perfect uh, fit, SR would be uh, zero, and then R would be very nearly equal to one, okay? So, or for uh, uh, SR is equal to ST, the fit represents uh, no uh, improvement, okay? So that we can now see in the in this example so in this case estimation of error for the uh, linear uh, least square fit okay so compute the total standard deviation the standard error of the uh, estimate and the correlation coefficient for the data in the in this previous example so the example which we have just found we uh, we need to find the standard deviation uh, standard uh, error of the estimate and the correlation coefficient. So for this, we have these uh, formula. So this formula is for the standard deviation. And uh, this formula is for the uh, ST, which is the sum of the squares, uh, sum of the squares of the uh, from the mean value. Okay, so as we can see that uh, we, uh, with the data which we have, we can find these two values over here, from here. So here in this, if I go to our, my Excel, so then I can find uh, two additional uh, values over here. So one is the uh, Y uh, minus uh, Y bar, okay, Y minus Y bar. I can find this. So what is y minus y bar? So y is uh, uh, this uh, value. Okay, so in this case, as you can see that this is the y i minus y bar. So given value of y minus the difference from the average. Okay, minus the difference from the average. So this is the y minus uh, y bar. So uh, y minus y bar, and then the sum of that uh, will be give uh, will give us the value of the uh, uh, st. Okay, y minus y bar. Uh, we need y uh, minus y bar uh, square. Okay, y minus y bar. Square over here. So here we can have this. So y minus y minus y bar. So what is this value? So it is uh, uh, y was this this and y bar was y bar was this okay and uh, i can take uh, it's uh, i can fix it so it is minus 2.92 and uh, what is its square okay so it's square so this is uh, y uh, minus y bar uh, square. Okay, so what is it square? So it's equal to this and then square. So it is 8.57. So you have to take the difference of the y value and its average value and then take the square. 
and then now I can calculate all these values together. And then from here, I will take this auto sum. And then this is the sigma, okay, y minus uh, y bar square, okay, sigma y minus y bar square. So 22.714. And then this gives me the value of the st. Okay, this gives the value of the st. And what was st? Uh, st is uh, st is st is the uh, sum of the squares around the mean of the dependent variable. Okay, sum of the square is around the mean of the dependent variable. Okay, so uh, next we need to find. I need to find the sr. So sr can be found as the yi minus a naught minus a one x. So a naught minus a naught minus x is the predicted value. So the difference of the actual value and the predicted value and its square, okay? So this we can find from here like this. So, uh, well, we can write it like this, uh, uh, y that is uh, y minus a, a naught minus a one x square. So that how can we find? So we can find it like this. So uh, this is the given y value and minus the predicted y value is here. The predicted is here. This is uh, this y predicted is given by a naught plus a one x, okay? And then I close it and then I take the square and then it will be 0 0.16 and then and copy it here and uh, I, need this, I need this space for this sum so that was st on the right hand side and i need this auto sum so this will be the this value will be the sr okay this value will be the sr and uh, this value will be the ST, okay, ST. So ST is 22.17 and then this value will be the SR. So you can see that the value of SR is uh, very much uh, uh, less than the value of ST. So therefore, when we will take the ratios, so that ratio will be, will going to be uh, closer to uh, 0. Point, uh, uh, closer to 1.0. So it will give like a better fit. So in this case now, we, uh, uh, by this formula, uh, so we have find the ST and we have found the SR. So uh, there is another thing which we can find is which is called as the S5, which is the standard deviation, okay? Uh, the summation, so standard deviation will be given by this formula. So it will be equal to 22.7143, which is the sum of the squares around the mean and divided by n minus one. n minus one is the degree of freedom uh, 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 for that value. So n is the total number of data points and minus one is for that uh, subtracting out that uh, uh, one uh, mean value uh, out of that. So that will be the, uh, uh, that will be uh, that one value will be subtracted out from here. So seven minus one, that is six. So it will be 1.9457. So standard, uh, this is the standard deviation of the uh, data. Although we don't need uh, this uh, to find our values of R square over here. And then, uh, however, uh, these, uh, if we want to compare it with the, uh, uh, with this, uh, S T and S Y, then we can also find that. So this is the, so first we found the total standard deviation and then the standard error of the estimate. Okay, so total standard deviation is represented by S Y. Okay, so uh, whereas this total standard deviation 
so that the formula is uh, s uh, r over n minus 2 and s r we have found from this table this was s r okay so it will be 2.991 uh, but for this the degree of freedom will be n minus 2 uh, because uh, in this case we will uh, we will not consider uh, the two uh, data points which will be initially uh, needed for the for the fit of this curve okay so a naught so that's why we have also two these two uh, variable points uh, a naught and a1 so this will be n minus 2 so in this case it will be 0 0.7735 so again you can see that the standard deviation and and the standard error of the estimate have their values and you can see that standard error of the estimate is much less than the standard error uh, uh, standard deviation of the data okay so it which means that uh, the uh, uh, the spread of uh, variation of the uh, this, this estimate estimated value is uh, much smaller than the variation of the original data points and then the third thing which we can find as as the coefficient of determination okay so for this we don't need these uh, s y and s y over x values we can just calculate by the uh, s t and s r values which uh, we have seen from uh, these tables okay so s t and s r so s t was 22.17 and s r will be 2.91 so the coefficient of determination is 0 0.868 and uh, and the coefficient of its uh, square root so if you take the square root of the coefficient of determination if we call it as the co correlation coefficient okay so take the square root of this then it will be 0 0.932 so the r value which we will calculate uh, is now 0 0.932 Okay, the coefficient of correlation. So, what is the uh, interpretation of these results? So, these results indicate that 86.86% of the original uncertainty has been explained by the linear model. So, this is uh, this is the interpretation. Okay. So, although uh, so for a better goodness of it, so this value should be closer to uh, one. Okay. However, its square of that value, the meaning of that is that that much uh, percentage of value uh, will explain the original uncertainty by the linear uh, model. Okay. So, uh, for better results, uh, our final conclusion is that the value of R, that is the correlation coefficient, should be closer to uh, 1. Okay, so uh, this example is completed. So do you have any question about this example? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, in fact, uh, uh, we can find this coefficient of correlation also on the in uh, Microsoft Excel, but that I think I will explain it later or even you already maybe know as well. So for example, if I just uh, delete this data point and uh, I click this chart and right click and then uh, uh, maybe I can select the data or maybe I can click somewhere else. Yeah, here and then somewhere there is will be an option for adding the uh, trend line as well. So format, select data, or maybe I need to select some data over here. I select it, I have selected the data and then I click the uh, right click it. yes and here it is giving us the option that add the trend line so it is asking that what trend line i want to add i uh, uh, i want to add the linear line okay
Okay, so linear line I want to add, and then it shows that whether you want to display the equation on the chart, and then I want to display the R squared value on the chart. I said yes. I say yes. And then everything has been displayed over here. You can see that. So this trend line has been plotted, which is the same line which we calculated before. And its R square value is 0 0.8683. So which is the same answer as before. So in Microsoft Excel, we don't have to do this, all these uh, calculations, but we can very easily uh, plot uh, this uh, trend line as well. But uh, by doing these uh, calculations, uh, you know how these values are uh, calculated. Okay, so uh, next is, okay, so our uh, next is, uh, this was the example 7.2. Uh, next is the uh, linearization of non-linear relationship. So you see that we have in this previous two, uh, uh, in previous example, we have uh, tried to uh, uh, draw a line to represent this data, okay? However, there may be cases uh, where the points will be such that that uh, a line may not be a very uh, good fit for that data, okay? As you can see that, uh, you can very clearly see that the line is not a very good fit for this kind of data. So on, the, on those situations, uh, we can have a curvilinear curve, okay? Uh, we, we need to uh, fit this data with the help of some curve, which is not a line. Uh, however, there is a still a way uh, that uh, we can represent this data uh, in the uh, linear format. And that is called as the linear linearization of the nonlinear relationship. Okay, Linearization of the nonlinear relationship. And then this linearization of the nonlinear relationship uh, is obtained by uh, uh, sir, uh, is obtained by some ways. And these uh, ways are, these ways use the uh, logarithmic curves. So for example, if we have uh, a curve, uh, which is uh, approximately represented by in an exponential equation. So y is equal to alpha one e power beta one x, okay? In this case, if we take the log of these two, uh, two sides, then uh, maybe I can show you over here in this. In the, as well. Yeah, I have skipped some parts of this chapter, but uh, let's go through here. So for example, if we have uh, uh, this curve, y is equal to alpha one uh, plus beta one x. And uh, for this curve, we can see that we can, if you take the log of this both sides, so it will be log y, natural log y plus natural log is equal to log of alpha one plus beta one x log e, plus beta one x log e. So since log e is equal to one, so this curve, uh, and this equation reduces to this log y is equal to log alpha plus beta one x. So now if we look at this uh, uh, equation, this is the equation, uh, this can be, this uh, equation can be interpreted as the, e, as the equation of a line when we take log, uh, when, when we plot log y, 
against x. In that, in those cases, a naught will be equal to uh, uh, log of alpha one, and a one will be equal to beta one. So in this case, then that means we can plot, we can represent this exponential curve by a semi-log plot. Semi-log plot. That means we can plot uh, y values on logarith uh, log values and the x value as the linear values. And that semi-log plot will be an approximately a, a straight line. So this will be the linearization of the exponential function. Uh, a, another type of function, which is the uh, not, uh, which is the simple, uh, uh, which is the power function, okay? Which is the power function. In this case, uh, uh, instead of the uh, pow power e, it will be the power of x, okay? In that case, we can take the log to the base 10 on both sides. And then we will get log y plus beta 2 log x plus log alpha 2. So here we can plot the uh, x and y values both on the logarithmic scales, Log both on the logarithmic scales. And then we will get a straight line. Okay, then we will get the straight line. And the third type of curves, uh, curves are this kind, okay? In which uh, y is equal to alpha three plus x over beta one, beta three plus x. And uh, these curves are called as the, uh, uh, these curves are uh, called as the, uh, growth uh, curves, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these curves are called as, but for this curve, what we can do is we can take this reciprocal of both sides. So instead of Y, we will take one over Y and then instead of X, then we can reciprocal of the both side. And then here we can see that if we plot the reciprocal of Y and reciprocal of Y, X against each other, we get a line over here, okay? With some insert intercept and the slope. So in this case, then we can also linearize it, okay? So, so these, are, these are some of the ways for the linearization of the, uh, of the curves of these kinds. So exponential uh, power uh, to, the, uh, to the power of X and then the uh, this is the growth curves. So exponential model, okay. And uh, then the simple power equation, okay. And then is the uh, growth, uh, saturation growth rate equation. So this, the third type of equation is called as the saturation growth rate equation. So, so these three kinds of cases, exponential, simple power, and the saturation growth rate equations, we can apply the linearization technique to convert those curves into their uh, linear equivalent, and then we can find the linear regression, and then we can apply the linear regression. Uh, okay, so that's all for uh, today. So uh, we will uh, continue this topic in the uh, on, on this Friday and hopefully we will uh, complete it. Okay, so do you have any question?